Welcome, Mark, and uh, what an interesting week it's been in our Super Rugby. The rugby gods certainly weren't uh, reading the script this week. They weren't, they weren't. Some wolves to beat the Chiefs, no one would have picked that. In hindsight, you think there's a lot of problems with the Chiefs. And then uh, you got the Jaguars, right, to knock over the Blues, good call. Uh, Sharks uh, should have won, Stormers, uh, it could have gone either way. The big one for me that surprised is how easily the Bulls went to Ellis Park and demolished the Lions. It seemed that, that um, the Lions just had a, had a plan A, and after the plan A didn't work, again, what do they do? Well played to the lion, to the bulls. I mean, they, and you know how much? How much now are we going to read into the forms? Because let's look at let's look at the sun wolves. The the sharks went and beat them by thirty five. The chief they they, they went and played uh, the Warthogs and lost by one point. They then beat the Chiefs by fifteen in New Zealand. In New Zealand, so. I mean, this is where you start as a as a as a as a punter and an analyst. An analyst is looking at, at how much how much you can read into the form. I think for, for for me, I think, and we'll discuss this in, in a little while. The, the Lions are, 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 are when you look at them, they're trading on on reputation and not reality. The Sharks, 35 point win against the the, the Sun Wolves. Um, everybody expects that, oh, that that should have been expected and you even said you know it was nice to put a team away by so much that you expected to but what is the expectation now on on teams and how much is that form worth when you compare it to a 15 point loss by the Chiefs to the Sun Wolves a 35 point win by by the Sharks against the Sun Wolves but then to make things even more confusing for the people out there you've got a, a Bulls team that beats the the uh, the Stormers by 38, and then the Stormers go to Emirates Park and and and, and destroy the Lions. I mean, it's where's the form? I mean, the, I think the most interesting game this week for me is the is the Bulls Sharks. Did the Sharks overestimate the, uh, the underestimate the the Stormers? Who who to me uh, scoring one try in three games sums up the 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 the, the state of, of of Western Province rugby. Look, I think when it's the South African derbies and we've seen they, with the exception of that first one, they, they've been very tight. There seems to be a direct instruction from Rusty Erasmus to try and play more World Cup rugby, yeah. more conservatively. Even coming back, Peter Steff had a big game. Yeah. Sia Khalees is a good player. If you look at the individuals in that storm side, they're a good side. But in the, in the context of the game, and if you're unemotional and you say as an observer, regardless of the result, even watching the 80 minutes, you think, how the hell did the Sharks lose that game, okay? So it's a game they shouldn't have lost. It's one that may count against them. A bit like you look at the Lions-Stormers game, you think, how the hell did the Lions do that one? So fair play to the Stormers for guts, character, pride. But there's no innovation. One try, two tries in three games. There's no, nothing, no spark. Uh, Dobbo has been appointed, John Dobson. He's going to take is that a good? Is that a good appointment? I think it's a great appointment. In the context of, I thought Dobbo should have replaced when Eddie Jones did a run after 10 days, I thought Dobbo was the one to come in. I was very surprised, we said this often, that Flecky came in, having coached the under-19 side. At that stage, Dobbo had coached the super sports side. He'd been involved with the Curry Cup side. He had done very well with it. What, what, what will, sorry Mike, what, what will Dobson bring to, to, I don't know, I've never met the gentleman. Um, seems like a, an amiable guy and, and, and has had success in, in, in various structures. What will he bring to a Stormers team in the future that the, the fans can look forward to as compared to Robbie Fleck? I think if you look at the way they played in the Super Sports Series, the way they played in the Curry Cup, you'll see more of that. I, I think he brings a little bit more structure and realism. Mm. Where Flecky has been a flamboyant coach, he's kind of play off the cuff, a nice guy kind of thing. I think he brings a bit more rugby intelligence. And I also think he has a greater understanding of transformation in South Africa, but specifically in the Western Cape and what it means to people in the Western Cape to have a fully transformed side. Uh, I think it's a good appointment. I think it's, it's, he'll be a good three-year appointment. And in 2020, when they do move to the Cape Town Stadium, post the World Cup, a whole new era of rugby. We see all the things that are going on, how the game's going to change. You'll see, you'll see a, a, a Stormers team that kind of talks to everyone in the Western Cape. Uh, and I hate that word on merit because that's a very subjective thing. But in terms of representativity, is that he is a bloke who is schooled here. He went to UCT, he played in the front row, he was a great uh, club hooker, kind of filtered with provincial rugby. He comes from a, vet, a rich history of, of rugby in his family. His dad, Paul Dobson, is one of, one of the most revered referees, a senior statesman in this country when it comes to rugby. He understands the Western Cape dynamics. 
and takes it very seriously. You're not, you're not dating him, are you? Not at all, eh? He wouldn't date me, eh? When you bought his magazine, because he used to be the editor of SA Rugby magazine oh, really? as well, yeah. Oh, wow. So he's a rugby writer turned coach. Wow. So, yeah, so player, I didn't know that. editor turned coach. Wow. So, uh, and yeah, a good, all around good bloke. Flecky's a good bloke. I just don't think he was ready to coach at this level. I think Flecky goes overseas and he comes back in three or four years, he may become a very good coach. But on what basis did he get the job as an under 19 coach straight in? And I think that was the critique all along. And then they regressed as they went along. But, uh, but coming back to the game, it was backs against the wall, kind of stoic three weeks into the tournament. It doesn't make you super rugby champions. What did you, what did you think of Jakob Piper's refereeing? <sighs> you know, as good as he was the week before that, I just thought he was just diabolical. And that's the thing, Marius van der Westhuizen has an absolute mare in, uh, in Brisbane. He sends off a player, uh, or the player goes off for a concussion, he won't let the next player come on. He, he has made a refereeing error that Sanzo have said it was a refereeing error, he should have known the rules, and he gets given the Bulls Sharks game, the biggest game of the weekend. Well, when you compare it to, say, and for the, sorry, this is, I know we're a rugby show, when you compare it to last night's, or, or uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night's Man United, PSG, last minute AVR, got the call right. Many, many, many Liverpool fans will argue that they got the call wrong, but at least they, they, the referee had a chance to relook at the issue and, and correct the correct it rather than it being a talking point for weeks and weeks. Which would have changed the whole, Man United would have been out, PSG would have gone through. Changed the whole course of the season. So you've got, you've got a case where- And I'm where, a Leeds fan, I'm not a Man United fan, so I, I thought it was a penalty. Anyway, let's go on. So you've got a case where a referee then has made a mistake. Yeah. The official board says he's made a mistake. Yeah. And whether he gets stood down for two games or three games or doesn't referee the next game, their reward is to give him the biggest South African derby. And that's the issue that I have with Sanzo at the moment. There is never an accountability to a human error. But his wasn't human error. He showed that he didn't actually know the rules. Yeah, uh, but, but I'm talking Jaco Piper. <laughs> I went to Boris van der Beste. Okay. I just thought Jaco Piper had one of those shockers there. From the beginning, it just... It, se it almost seemed as if he was anti-sharks. Like, and, and, and vehemently so. I'm sorry for the Western Province fans out there. I'm, not a, I'm a neutral fan. I'm a fan of, of Cardiff. Cardiff. So I, I, I celebrate rugby. I was amazed at the sort of aggressive nature of his calls against the Sharks. But take the England-Wales game, and I thought he was magnificent. Yeah, well, Wales won, so he was fantastic. He was, but he had no emotion attached to the game. He was just yeah. a good referee. Yeah. I, I get the sense when he referees South African teams, he's either shown he's not for the home team, he's neutral, so it makes him for the away team. It's, it's, he's so wary of being accused of bias. When he refereed the, the final uh, at Ellis Park with the Lions and, and the Crusaders, I really did feel that he was, he was anti the Lions yeah. in that sense. Not anti them, but so vehement in his mind that he wasn't going to show anyone. But when he had to send Quacker Smith off, he did it with such absolute apology. Yeah. Where a normal referee would have said, you've done that, you've played him in the air, you've got to go. He's like, listen here, yeah, the rules dictate. As much as I would want to, it's like the referee shouldn't be that emotionally attached. I think he's a bloody good referee. But I just thought it was one of those, you know, great players have some shocking games. Yeah. I thought Jakob Paper, as good as he was in the Six Nations as a referee, yeah. the kind of performance that you give in the World Cup final. Who's he refereeing this weekend, you know? I don't even know. No. Mate, maybe they stood him down. <laughs> So yeah, but to, to, to go back to that, I thought, again, and not detracting from gutsy win for the Stormers, they're not going to win anything. They're not going to... Do you think, how do you think they'll travel? They won't travel well. Uh, the funny thing is, I look at the New Zealand team forms and uh, everything is geared towards uh, the World Cup, as we've said often. 2015, the only time since 2001, the Crusaders never made the playoffs. The core of their All Blacks were said to be not good enough, out of form, but they were on the All Black schedule. Who played magnificently in the quarterfinal, semi-final, final? It was the Kieran Reeds, the Dan Carters, and the Richie McCaws. Seasoned New Zealand journalist, three months into Super Rugby, said they shouldn't go to the World Cup. Yeah. Steve Hansen laughed. 2011, same kind of thing. You look now, the Chiefs are just these serious issues within the franchise. The Blues, we know what's happening. The Hurricanes are starting to come. The Highlanders, flaky. They may come back again later on because of the lack of All Blacks. But the team that is still winning without five of their main All Blacks, the Crusaders, and where are they winning? They went to Brisbane and they won. They went to Auckland and they won. They winning, they smashed the Hurricanes team at home. So the 18 unbeaten, eight on the road, 
unbeaten. It's the most statistically successful side in the history of Super Rugby and they still have to get Sam Whitelock back. They still have to get Kieran Reid back. They still have to get three of the outside backs back that have played for the All Blacks. But I read a piece today saying uh, scratchy start to season for Crusaders. <laughs> like, was, this that, was that the same journalist that said that the Welsh Winning 11 in a row was, 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 was really meant nothing. It meant nothing. And also the, the win against England meant nothing because it was a terrible game. So uh, it's, yeah. So I, I still think three weeks into the tournament now, I would say Crusaders will be up there. Hurricanes will come. Uh, they will still lose a few games. Uh, so I'd say those are your top two teams from New Zealand. I still like the look of the Highlanders over the context of the season. They'll drop a few games. They, they, you know, I, I, I agree with the first two. Highlanders, geez, they have the worst tackling, I think, uh, the, the worst tackling percentage in, in, in Super Rugby and um, I think this weekend it might be a bit of a problem with them. But for the millennials out there, and we really apologize that we took five minutes of your time, let's get, let's get back into, let's, let's, make a, let's make a call on every game from a Super Brew point of view and, um, and then we'll, we'll get into the games that we're going to bet on this weekend because I know that the millennials have started to watch their YouTube channel. Um, okay, we got the Hurricanes Highlanders by how many? Uh, 10 plus. 10 plus. Give me a number. 12 points. Yeah, I like them by 12 as well. You, you obviously saw my, my pick. I did, I just looked at your book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Highlanders uh, just uh, are at that level. You know, it's like I know they're going to the, they're gonna have a couple of players back that they didn't have last week. Um, but the Hurricanes at home, it's going to be a tough game, man. Barrett's back. Uh, they brought Jordy Barrett back for this weekend. They're starting to go. They're a side that's always going to be in the top four, top five. Uh, Le Marpi's playing well at 12. The minute Bowden Barrett comes back, he comes into the game. They'll, they'll be there. A strong attacking side against a team that misses so many tackles doesn't make for a great recipe. And it could be a 15, 20, 20 plus game. So on Super Brew, I may actually go 15. So for me, I'm going to go 15. I'm changing that. You're going 12. Not betting on the game. Yeah. This is just Super Brew. This is okay. Super Brew. Rebels. Red, Rebels, Brumbies. Rebels at home, yeah. seven. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I, I, uh, maybe I should not let you go first. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like seven. The Brumbies got destroyed last week. Um, the, the Rebels have looked like a pretty, pretty tidy outfit. South African born, raised, yeah. UCT Dave Vessels doing the, doing the business there. Yeah, it's, you know, they've, they've, they've got a, they've got a, a you know, they've had years to build that team now, and, and, and they're starting to to show a bit of the fruits of of of, um, of development. Yeah. And they're pretty organised, pretty organised in defence, in attack. Brumbies will cause some problems, so so, so seven is not a bad call. I'm going to go seven as well. We've got the Crusaders versus the Chiefs. Crusaders by twenty at home. Crusaders by twenty at home. I, I think there may be a bit of a knee jerk reaction. Um, no one gets up for the Sun Bowls, let's be honest. I mean, last year we were, I was calling them the Sun Pups. I mean, they're, they're not a good team. And every once in a while, an anomaly happens. That's why we watch sports. I would say the Crusaders are going to win, but by only by 15, not 20. Um, not betting on that game either. Blues. Sun Wolves. Blues, Sun Wolves. Oh! Very emotional game. Uh... They lost the young 23-year-old prop. He wasn't in the, the main squad. He, he passed away last week. Michael Just... Tamo Ayeta. Michael Tamiato. Tamiato. That's very okay. good. Okay. No, that's not bad. Very good. Not yeah, bad. look, it's, uh, it's tra coming to play, tragic at 23. Tragic and yeah. very emotion. Uh, no, uh, they're not playing at Auckland. Where are they uh, playing? One of the, the smaller venues and they they dedicating the match to him and they kind of I think renaming the stadium for the night after him. Sonny Ball Williams has been made captain, so I think they're playing very big into that specific Pacific Island emotion around the game. I think the Blues will smash them, okay? I, I agree. I think, I, I think for me, you've got two storms coming here. You've got, you've got the emotionality of the game, you've got a Blues team that's desperate for a win, and you've got a team, the Sunwolves, that all thought that they've won the Rugby World Cup by, by knocking over the Chiefs. To be able to refocus and, and, and up your game, for, for, to that level, two weeks in a row, statistically for me, always proves almost impossible. Not Im improbable, not impossible. I think Man United did the improbable last night, or maybe the impossible. Anyway, um, for me, you've got, uh, you've got those two factors coming together, and I would say 20 plus. So I, I see that um, 
The blues are favored by 14, which, which the bookies are saying minus 14 and a half. It's a handicap. I would, I will be a layer of that. I will, I will, so I will give the points to the Sunwolves. I'll give 14 and a half points to the Sunwolves. So I'm going to bet a thousand rand on the blues to beat the Sunwolves by 15 or more points. And I, and, I, and it could be, it could be biblical. Um, I think they'll smash them. Yeah, they, we could get back to the old Sunwolves. I'd be surprised if it isn't. And if it, and, but that's, that's the right bet to make on that one. Then we have the Waratahs versus the Reds. Almost a who cares game. I hate to say that, but... Um, Any Aussie games are who cares game. Yeah, yeah. Waratahs to win it up. I'm going to I'm going to take the I'm going to take it, the I'm going to take the, sun, the the Blues to win by 25. Sorry, with the, let's keep in mind with the Super Brew stuff. Uh, the the Waratahs nine points for me. Not betting on the game. And then we got the Lions versus Jaguars. The, the Lions aren't the team that they were. I think that's obvious to everybody. But I don't think what, what is obvious to everybody is just how how not like last year they are or aren't. When I looked at the team list this morning, yeah. it was like, wow, it's a varsity cup side yeah. against the test side. And we, we backed the Jaguars to beat them in uh, Buenos Aires just based on they hadn't won there. They always travel poorly there. Somehow they, they got the win. They were poor at, uh, at Newlands and Diabolical at Ellis Park against, against the Bulls. Look, I still think the Lions are going to pox a win. But when you've got a 300% return for, for, for bet, the Lions aren't beating them uh, three out of three times uh, and then for me that's the value bet two to seven offers probably what about a 28 percent return on your money so no 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 sensible gambler is going to take that th those odds i like the three to one i think it's worth at least 500 rand down to win uh, 2000 rand back it, it was, so w if it doesn't come in just remember folks that there's only a 25 percent chance statistically that that's going to happen so don't tell me yeah see what do you say now what I say now is I took a punt and it was the best probable outcome bet from a, from a statistical point of view. I'll take 300% return on, 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 as a risky gamble on, on the Jaguars to upset the, um, the Lions. But what I'll do even more is I'm going to put 2,000 Rand down that the Lions don't win by 10 or more points. That the, 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 the Jaguars, sorry, the Jaguars don't lose by 10 or more points. And that's the, that'll give you 9 to, 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 to 10 money, 90% return on your money. The, the Jaguars, for me, the concern is, is, is discipline. But what I like about the Jaguars um, uh, is that they, 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 they kick for points all the time. So the, board, the scoreboard's always rolling over. And they have a good kicker. And, and at, at altitude, you know, any, any transgressions by the Lions, they'll, they'll be punished. And, they, and like you say, it's, it, it, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a varsity cup team, but it, 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 it's got the veneer of one. And they're playing the they're playing Argentina. The, the Pumas, the, the Jaguars, for all intents and purposes, are the Pumas. So that is a good solid bet, and I like it. Um, but for my Super Brew, <laughs> I'm going to be going Lions by four points. So I'm actually think I'm going to lose my own bet. So don't. So for the for the for the intelligent gamblers out there, they'll understand what I'm talking about. For the other guys, just just bear with me. It's, you know the, the the gambling year lasts a year, and we look at profits over the year, not just over one game. Uh, then we have the Bulls Sharks. Bulls at home, 12 points plus. <sighs> Ooh, sorry, Shark fans. Um, look, the Bulls have beaten the Stormers by 38. The Sun Wolves, the mighty Sun Wolves by 35. That was the Sharks, eh? Sharks. Sorry, the Sharks have beaten the Sun Wolves by 35. They've beaten um, Blues sorry, by 19. The Blues by 19. They lost at home to the Stormers, and then the, the Bulls have won too comfortably against South Africa and then lost away to the Jaguars. Yeah, and, and you know, in fairness to them, I don't think they travel well. I, I think we talked about uh, some, of the, uh, some of the Dutch guys being a bit putty when they travel. Um, in fairness to them, that was a pretty, the, the, the conditions for that game were pretty horrendous. So, you know, it didn't allow them to play probably their, their, their style of rugby. And um, the Jaguars are a good team at punishing te teams and they take their points and they keep the board ticking over as I talked about. The Bulls for me though look so formidable at home. And you know, after, after, see after, um, after seeing their performances at home, you'd have to say that they're strong favorites to win, to win this game. And um, what, I, what, what I found amazing, and I think this is the bet of the year, 
and I'm gonna have to go against a lot of Shark fans who, who, who dish out the most vitriol to me. But the Bulls at minus four and a half at home, for me, is a steal. For them to win by five or more and get 90% return is one of the best bets that I've seen this year. I would agree with you, and you've got Skullbritz at two, Dwayne Familiar at eight, Andre Pollard at 10, Jesse Krill at 13, and Warren Kalant at 15. That's the spine of a team that's gonna be very successful. I'm gonna put two and a half thousand Rand down on the, blue, on the Bulls to beat the Sharks by five or more this, this Sunday, and it should be, a, should be a cracker. Well, Mark, thanks very much for coming in and sharing your, your insight and, and, and your, your super group picks with us, and let's hope that the rugby gods read, read from the same script that I've, I've put out there this week. Cheers, mate.